getting good data is the most important part. And that's probably the place where the data scientist will spend most of his time trying to do. I built over time, and when I say over time, uh, I mean 16 years uh, of experience in different areas. I'm 32, 32 years old, so 50% of my life I dedicated to IT. And in, in, that, in that particular time, I spent time, you know, trying to learn one specific area really well, which is, you know, the depth of what, whatever I was doing. But there is always the sense of there is a glass ceiling that you cannot go through. And in order for you to be able to go to the next level, you need to learn things that you take for granted. So initially I started as a developer and I was really good at re reasoning about problems that people want me to solve. But whenever it came to really um, intensive, data intensive applications, I was probably falling short because I didn't know how to come up with a solution. So that's how I ended up working with solutions architecture. And that was really important, really, really important because it opened my mind and my eyes to other ways of developing software and also how to make it easier for people between the two areas. There is a grand canyon of, you know, uh, of misunderstanding between solutions architecture and development. And the funny thing is there is the same grand canyon between everyone else and data science and DevOps. So there are, you know, big silos and only a few people can, you know, traverse from point A to B and translate that between, you know, the, the two teams so they can actually do things together. So I spent my time doing solutions architecture. It was really good, loved what I did. And I was ready, you know, for the, for, 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 for the next thing, which was about, you know, the whole operations side of things. A lot of times I came up with solutions where people told me, Paulo, it works in your idea. It works probably on your PPT, but the reality is a little bit different. In, 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 for instance, to implement the solution that you told me to, I have to change so many things internally and so many processes that is not feasible. In the ideal world, it works, but in the real world, it doesn't. So I needed to understand that better because the best solution is not the one that you see on the Netflix blog post or on a Google's blog post. The best solution is the one that they need right now that can solve their problem, but it creates the least friction as possible. It, it, it's very different from one company to another company. So I went, I gravitated towards, you know, operating system, hardware, and, and everything else. And at some point I did the same for machine learning, probably out of the desire to understand yet a different area and try to bring all the experiences that I had in all of, all of the other areas I have worked for. So I could be a more complete professional and try to help you know, whatever company I was working for, you know, to get, to, to get solutions to the market faster. So that was my desire. So I keep moving because I'm very curious and I want to learn more and more, otherwise I would get bored. But there is no clear path to why I did that. In the future, I'll probably work with something else and that's completely okay, as long as that keeps me entertained. Data science um, is basically an area, a subset of the IT field in which people dedicate some of them, their entire lives, to understand how to mimic some behaviors that, can expect, that they can expect in the real world and try to reason about them. So um, AI is one of the things you can do inside of data science. So we get lots of data, try to recognize patterns on that data and see what type of solutions we can come up with by trying to develop models that can achieve some sort of uh, um, outcome out of that. Usually the rule of thumb is if you cannot write that into a series of state of statements of if analysis, then usually that's a good idea to use um, artificial intelligence, right? But if you can reason about that and find a set of, you know, 
if statements and logical statements in which you can say, if I execute from top to bottom, I can get the best and the most optimal solution, then by all means, do that in the, the, the conventional way. For whoever is trying to get to data science, I can tell you one thing, you are living in the golden age for that particular transition or for that particular um, you know, job per se, because it's being built as we speak. There is no clear definition of what a da data scientist is and who can work in data science. So try to think of it in this way. Uh, the majority of problems and solutions that we have today have been conceived in the 1960s, 1970s, and people have been you know, basically building on top of that to get where we are right now. But for data science, we're still developing, you know, the tooling and everything that it's required to basically make our day-to-day -day work a bit more, you know, easy to grasp. So what that means is that you can be a, a software developer and work in data science. You can be a research a researcher that works with uh, a specific analysis of flow river and sorry, river flow, and is still working data science. You can be a mathematician and working data science. There is no clear definition because we need them all to basically see together and basically come up with the things that will help us developer develop um, models faster, develop solutions faster, and also to automate the cumbersome tasks that we have to do every single day. So answering your question directly, what can I be if I want to get into data science? You can be a software developer, you can be a mathematician, you can be a front-end developer and work with uh, a data science if you ask me, because there are so many things that we need to um, make it easier for uh, non-techie people. So in a way they can understand what they should do in order to get the answer they want. And building UI is probably the easiest way to get to the final uh, user, right? You can be a DevOps engineer and work with the entire um, automation or operations of um, model development, model testing, uh, quality assurance. Yeah, by the way, quality assurances or QA people are definitely one of the possibilities and very much, you know, required for data science. So everything you can have for a regular IT uh, department, you can have for data science. They will just required to understand also data science plus whatever they, they they understand before what what would be the difference between those roles that you can find in job portals uh, where they say data scientists are python uh, a database or a phd compared to these other jobs that you are saying like could be a front-end developer sure there are two ways to see that so the first one is there is this um, common misconception that data scientist is a role that you know only belongs to the people who are mathematicians and can create artificial intelligence models. This is partially true, but usually a person who dedicated a long time to know that doesn't actually understand everything else that is required to build from zero to you know, the, the production state of a solution. So you, you you need more knowledge than most people have. So the, those other roles I mentioned, they are supporting roles for that people to be able to do, you know, uh, um, you, you know, the job because it, it takes two to, you know, to tangle, right? So it also takes a lot of people to actually develop a, a data science solution. Um, but you actually mentioned something really interesting, which was the um, um, certain programming languages and some expertise with database. Remember, data science is about mimicking, you know, mimicking and also understanding the behaviors that happen in nature and somewhat translating that into, you know, solutions. And you need to be able to really explore the data you have available and understand 
where there is data which is not you know valid for you or outliers you need to be able to reduce noises coming from external uh, uh, um, sources in order to get good data getting good data is the most important part and that's probably the place where the data scientist will spend most of his time trying to do because there is no good data out there people don't sell good data people sell data and then you need to make it useful right so you need someone with uh, the experience to be able to reason about that because after that creating the the, art, the artificial intelligence model is really easy there is like almost a recipe for you to follow so that's why lots of people that came from a database administrator backgrounds or um, business intelligence background tend to become data scientists because it's just a, a rebrand of what they used to do but now with additional responsibilities like wow now you need to be really good at statistics now you need to be really good at that and something else so it's a combination of that plus the confusion that people have when it comes to the term data, data scientist. There is one thing which I highly suggest people, whether they are beginners or really, you know, expert developers, in order to basically advance in their careers. It's, n it's not easy for literally everyone uh, it, everyone face difficulties when they want to take to the next level but one thing that is very clear to me and worked really well for me is to come up with pet projects that in New Zealand we do that in the winter because you, we can't go outside so we have like a few months at home that you feel like okay now is the time to focus on something but there is a criteria for you to basically uh, 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 choose a, a good pet project and what must be in there. So a lot of people do that in, 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 in the wrong way. So they choose one project that they want to work on outside of you know the business hours, but they choose just one thing to learn. So let's say that they use language X and now they're gonna use language Y. When they do that, they are creating a mapper. So, wow, I did this that way. In this language, I do that that way. And this is a very bad way of doing it because there will be equivalent of trying to learn a new language, like from Spanish to, to English and try to translate things, you know, word by word, doesn't work. So try to really put yourself out of the comfort zone. You have to have at least two dimensions of things that you don't know. And then you combine that into a single winter project because that's, that's the way you're going to start asking the right questions most likely eventually you will you know revisit the whole technology history to understand why that's the best solution and that will probably make you learn it the proper way and these will definitely get seared into in, in your mind it's not going to be something you memorized people during interviews they know if you have memorized something or if you really understand what you're talking about so this shows not only depth but also breadth of whatever you you, you are working with and lots of people really uh, see that in a very positive way. So my suggestion is have lots of pet projects and you have to have a strictly adherence to the agenda you set up. Once you have that, the other things will come. It's just a matter of time, but make sure that this is something you also want that you are passionate about. If that's the IT, you have no problem but if that's something else that's the same strategy because that's reu a reusable strategy if you want to be a musician you're gonna you know do, do something like that you're not gonna learn just an instrument you're gonna learn an instrument and a style so do that to make sure that you're making your brain really satisfied with not only being uncomfortable but also with all the knowledge you're acquiring you know, you know, along the way it's really important Uh, we're not robots, so most likely you, you will you will plan for a specific day to do one of your activities and you don't feel like it. Don't force yourself into it. You, 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 if you really like what you're doing, that's not going to be you know a, a problem for you because you like doing it in the, in the first place. But if you're not in the mood 
don't force yourself into doing it, but make sure that first you know about that and you don't punish yourself mentally for not doing what you planned, but make sure to compensate that when you feel better. That's also really important because and the way that you actually know that you're compensating is very easy. Nothing is a plan if you don't know a way to track it. So I'm going to tell you one thing I did a long time ago. So uh, I was doing data structure or algorithms uh, uh, exercises, and I had, you know, certain times during the day to basically do it. And I was tracking how long I used to take to solve the same problems and see if I was solving them faster or slower than before and why. I would write like a, a one paragraph explaining why it took me longer to basically solve a solution or to write a code for a solution that in the past, I, 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 you know, I had a simpler solution I could write it faster. And as long as you can identify the blind spots that can be, you know, holding you back, the easier it will be for you to basically, you know, uh, uh, put a band-aid and somehow progress. You have to track it. If you track it, you, you're, you know exactly what what needs to be done because the plan is not one plan you define it once and you know you you stick to it until you you you, you get to your final destination. The plan changes very very often, and you need to be flexible to change your plan. So if you plan initially to write three programs per day and you realize that. It used to work in the past, but now you don't want to do this, you know, anymore because you have all the appointments. You have to re, you know, rearrange your schedule. It's also you have to be flexible, but also to be on top of whatever your plan is all the time. So, if you bear all of those things in mind, eventually you're gonna get it. It's just a matter of time, really.